Welcome to Dr. T Math. I hope that you enjoy the video. In this video, we're going to learn about the Taylor series. The Taylor series is a power series that looks like this. The nth derivative evaluated at a center point of the expansion a divided by n factorial times x minus a to the n. And we say that this is the Taylor series of f of x about x equals a. This requires that the function f of x has derivatives of all orders, which means that we can continue differentiating the function to generate its derivatives. For example, we must be able to compute f prime, and then we'll evaluate f prime at a. Often, a is zero. When x equals a, the center point of the expansion is zero, we call this Maclaurin series. In this example, we want to find a Taylor polynomial of order 3 generated by f of x equals 1 over x plus 2 about x equals 0. So here we want p3 of x, which is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to 3 of the nth derivative evaluated at 0, the center point of the expansion, divided by n factorial times x to the n. Writing this out term for term, it will look like f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared plus the last term when n equals 3 the third derivative evaluated at 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed. This is called the third order Taylor polynomial. In general, this number will match this number, but the last value of the power of the polynomial may be different than this number, as we'll see in a later example. In order to calculate this polynomial, we need to find f of 0, f prime of 0, f double prime of 0, and f triple prime of 0, and plug it into this polynomial. Let's do that. Here, f of x is equal to x plus 2 to the power minus 1 which is equal to 1 over x plus 2. The reason why I write it in this form is to invoke the power rule of differentiation, which tells me that the derivative is minus x plus 2 to the minus 2 power, and there's a chain rule here term times 1, but that derivative of x plus 2 is 1, so I'll just leave it like this. Now f double prime of x is equal to minus 1 times minus 2 times x plus 2 to the minus 3, bringing this power down and multiplying it, and then I have a chain rule, again, is 1. f triple prime of x is equal to minus 1 times minus 2 times minus 3 x plus 2 to the power minus 4. One should note that each of these derivatives is essentially a power rule derivative n x to the n minus 1. Now I need to evaluate each of these derivatives at the center point of my expansion. Here at x equals a, which is equal to 0, we have f of 0 is equal to 1 half. Here we have f prime of 0 is equal to minus 1 fourth. Here we have f double prime of 0 is equal to 2 eighths, which is positive 1 fourth. And here we have f triple prime of 0 is equal to minus 6 over 16, which is minus 3 over 8. Now that we have our forms for the derivatives and our evaluation of the derivatives at the center point of the expansion, we can plug these into the form for the Taylor polynomial. Taking into account this information here, we end up with the Taylor polynomial 1 half minus 1 fourth x plus 1 fourth times 1 over 2 factorial x squared minus 3 over 8 times 1 over 3 factorial x cubed, which can be simplified to 1 half minus x over 4 plus x squared over 8 minus x cubed over 16. One should observe that what we're doing is taking the derivatives in a derivative table. When finding Taylor series, we would want to extend this knowledge to a pattern. Then we evaluate each of our derivatives at the center point of the expansion and make a substitution into the formula for our Taylor polynomial. So here, f of 0 replaces this term identically and becomes this term. f prime of 0 replaces this term identically and becomes 1 fourth times x. 
of double prime of zero is one fourth and replaces this term identically and becomes this term one fourth times one over two factorial, which still needs to be simplified into one over four times one over two, which is one over eight. The last term is f triple prime, the third derivative at zero, that replaces this term identically, and then that becomes three eighths minus three eighths, and then we still have to multiply that by one over six. Looking at patterns, one could also extend this into a Taylor series just simply by studying the pattern here. So what the reader will notice that if you have minus one to the power n, it indicates a sine oscillation. And then we have x to the power n starting from zero and going zero, one, two, three on upward. And we divide by two to the power n plus one with n equals zero as the first term. So two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, two to the four, and so on. And then we make a summation from n equals zero to infinity. One will note the first term is positive, x to the zero is one divided by two, which is one half. n equals one gives us negative x to the one divided by two squared, which is four. And so this, in fact, is a geometric series. And the geometric series would look like the sum from n equals zero to infinity, negative one times x over two to the n times one half. Or represented another way, we could write it like this, n equals zero to infinity of one half times minus x over two to the n. This takes on a more typical form the sum from n equals zero to infinity of a r to the n, where r now is minus x over two. We could also say the series will converge when the absolute value of x over two is less than one. So you could look at an interval of convergence, and you could guarantee that the series would only converge for the absolute value of x over two is less than one. Then one would need to check the boundary points separately. In this case, this would indicate minus two is less than x is less than two, but we would still need to check the two endpoints at x equals minus two and two respectively. In this case, they will diverge. Let's study another example. Find the Taylor series of cosine of x about x equals zero. Another way to ask this question would be find the Maclaurin series of cosine of x. This function cosine of x is not so familiar to many people, one important observation about cosine and shine is that they have the same behavior as sine and cosine at the origin. The behavior at the origin of sine and cosine is similar for shine and cosine, and the derivative behavior is similar as well. Shine of x prime is cosine of x. Cosine of x prime is shine of x. Hence, the derivatives are similar, but no minus sign is introduced when differentiating a hyperbolic cosine. Similarly, the behavior at the origin shares the same type of structure as these two points. So for example, the cosine function looks like this. It goes through 0, 1 and has slope 0 at 0. Cosine goes through 0, 1 and has slope 0 at 0. Sine goes through the origin of coordinates, and it has slope 1 at the origin. And sine function goes through 0, 0 and has slope 1 at the origin. So they share similar slope and function values at the origin. So this one is shine of x. And this one is cosine of x, hyperbolic cosine. So the value and behavior of the slope at these points is the same for both functions. Hence, if I were to ask the question, what is the cosine of zero? Well, that's one, which is the same as the cosine of zero, which is one. The shine of zero is zero, and that is the same as the sine of zero, which is zero. With that information, we're in a better position to talk about the Taylor series for the shine function and the cosine function. In both cases, we'll want to compute the Taylor series generated by the function, which will be the power series with coefficients fn of zero over n factorial times x to the n. The expansion of this power series is equal to f of zero plus f prime of zero plus f double prime of zero over two factorial times x squared plus f triple prime of zero times x cubed over three factorial, plus the nth derivative evaluated at zero divided by n factorial times x to the n, and so on. To figure out what this Taylor polynomial and then Taylor series ought to look like, to figure out what the Taylor series should look like, we want to take the derivatives and look for a pattern. f of x is equal to cosine of x. f 
prime of x is equal to shine of x. F double prime of x is equal to cosine of x, which brings us back def of x, hence there's a cyclic pattern. Here, f of 0 is equal to the cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. f prime of 0 is equal to the shine of 0 is equal to 0. And then the pattern continues. So f double prime of 0 is equal to cosine of 0 is equal to 1. The observation here is that the even terms, or the even derivative terms, the zeroth derivative, the second derivative, the fourth derivative, and so on, are all returning a numerical value of 1, and the odd derivatives, the first derivative, the third derivative, the fifth derivative, and so on, will all return 0. Hence, in our summation formula, the terms that survive are the even terms. Those will be associated with the number 1 corresponding to an even derivative, and all of the values corresponding to odd derivatives will all be 0. So this term will be out, and this term will be out, and all odd values of the derivatives will be out. So, substituting in these values, the first term will be 1, the value of the function. The second term will be 0, so we could add 0. The third term, f double prime, will be 1 over 2 factorial times x squared. The third term, an odd derivative, will be 0. The fourth derivative, again, f4, will be 1 divided by 4 factorial times x to the fourth, and so on. When writing the Taylor series, we will ignore these zero elements, and we write 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, plus x to the sixth over 6 factorial, and so on, which can be written as a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the 2n over 2n factorial. Let's do two more examples. Example, find the Taylor polynomial of order 2 generated by f of x equals x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 about x equals minus 1. It should be observed that the Taylor series of this polynomial will just return the function itself. However, the second order Taylor polynomial is a different matter, where we compute the sum from n equals 0 to 2, so that this number here, the order matches this number here in the sum of the nth derivative evaluated at a, which is minus 1 in this case, divided by n factorial times x minus a, which will be x minus minus 1 to the power n. So here we have to plug in about x equals minus 1, which will be substituted here and here. So this becomes where we put the a value in the series, a equal minus 1 and a equal minus 1. Now what we need to do is calculate our derivatives. So we have f of x equals x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1, f prime of x is equal to 4x cubed plus 2x, and f double prime of x is equal to 12x squared plus 2. We can stop there, because that will be the last derivative we need to compute. Evaluating each of these derivatives at minus 1, this little point of the expansion, we have f of minus 1 equals 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 f prime of minus 1 is negative 4 plus minus 2 is negative 6, and f double prime of negative 1 is 12 plus 2, which is 14. Hence, if we write out the sum for the second order Taylor polynomial, it will ask for f of minus 1 plus f prime of minus 1 times x plus 1 plus f double prime of minus 1 over 2 factorial times x plus 1 squared, and this will be the n equals 0 term, the n equals 1 term, and the n equals 2 term. Substitution of these values into our formula for our derivative terms will then give us our answer. The final answer is then 3 plus negative 6 times x plus 1 plus 14 over 2 times x plus 1 quantity squared. For our final example, let's compute the Taylor series generated by f of x equals e to the 2x about x equals 2. In this case, we want to find the Taylor series, which is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivative evaluated at 2 divided by n factorial times x minus 2 to the n. You'll note 
one should note that a equals 2 in this case, and a equals 2 in this case. And we substitute that value into the formula like this. Then we want to develop a pattern for the nth derivative, starting from f of x equals e to the 2x, f prime of x equals 2e to the 2x, f double prime of x equals 2 times 2 e to the 2x, which is 2 squared e to the 2x, f triple prime of x equals 2 cubed e to the 2x. And so now a pattern starts to develop. I feel pretty comfortable at this point to say the nth derivative will be 2 to the n e to the 2x. Then we need to evaluate each of these terms at our center point of our expansion. However, if you have the nth derivative, you can just directly substitute in the a for that value, and it will hold for all other values. So there's no need to go to the trouble of substituting it in for each of these values, because once you have a formula for the nth derivative, you can substitute it into this right here. Hence, we get our answer in one step, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivative evaluated at 2, so 2 to the n, e to the fourth, divided by n factorial times x minus 2 to the n. Finding this term, looking for a pattern, allows us to make a substitution into the formula and get the answer much quicker than having to go through the trouble of solving for each derivative independently and plugging it into a Taylor polynomial.